games for change. The goal of Take Action Games is to address content of social and political significance via innovative game design that traverses the intersections of computational art, narrative, journalism, activism, ethics, history, and documentary. The Take Action Games team strives to create interactive experiences that speak of critical issues with an, appropriate, uh, with an approach that prioritizes subject matter, research, and emotionality in the hopes of expanding the expression of uh, expressive power of games and thereby engaging a far-reaching audience of casual and non-gamers. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we're so happy to be here. We've been wanting to come for many years and I'm glad we have a game panel uh, this year. So we're just going to show a few of our works and We'll go to the game design front. Great. Um, yeah, thank you for having us here. So we work together. Um, we are Take Action Games. Our third partner is right here shooting us at the moment. I'll shoot you. <laughs> um, one of the first games that we made is this game called The Force Dive, which launched in 2006. Um, it was a collaboration with, uh, it, it was made by a team of, of colleagues, of advisors, and, and, and experts, from mostly um, grant based at the University of Southern California. And it was um, an interesting collaboration actually between USC, MTV, and Interfuel, and two NGOs, the International Rescue Committee and the International Crisis Group. Um, it was also um, part of my graduate thesis at USC, and as such, it was an exploration into activist gaming, uh, a little bit more specifically, sort of gaming that uh, interweaves play with nonfiction and calls to action. Um, our second project is the project that's actually shown here, thank you, thanks to Cam. It's called Finding Zoe. Um, and I'll show a little bit of video of it as I speak over it. Um, it was a, a collaboration with a nonprofit group um, called uh, METRAC, or the Metropolitan Action Committee on Violence Against Women and Children, which is a Canadian nonprofit organization that, prevents, that works on preventing um, violence against diverse women, youth, and children. And the game very specifically addresses healthy relationships, and among uh, specifically again in, in the context of teen dating. Um, and this uh, was a great collaboration because actually it, it sort of pointed towards the fact that there's a, we love to work we, we work with nonprofits. Um, in this case, Metroc was really innovative and pioneering. Back in you know 2006, they decided that you know. They wanted to uh, make a game part of their campaign, which for nonprofits is a big deal because these are, you know, they, they struggle to have budgets just for their regular, you know, activities and programs. So, you know, it was a real collaboration where we really tried to squeeze the most out of a very, very small budget. Um, and what's great also about working with them was clearly they were the subject matter experts. Um, they were able to sort of all along the line sell us what was appropriate gameplay, what was not appropriate gameplay. And they have the means and the resources to actually have a little bit of impact with this game, with their resource, with their connections already in after school programs and inside schools in, in Ontario, um, Canada. So um, that was replay. And so the game is a specific story where these girls, two, two girls, are navigating their neighborhood in search for a mutual friend, which they suspect might be sort of in a not such a great relationship. And uh, the more challenges you have in the neighborhood, um, and you are able to sort of accomplish them, you your posse grows, and the posse eventually finds the friend, and you're able to support, you know, show that you support her. And along the way, you've collected actual real resources that are relevant to local Ontario youth. Um, um, our next game. Uh, we have a current work in progress. It's also a documentary game. Uh, um, Directly here by Ashley York, and we're going to show a video of it. Oh, yeah. uh, that is more or less self explanatory. <laughs> Our current project is titled In the Balance and is both a long form documentary as well as documentary game that explores a story about some teenagers from my hometown in Kentucky who were convicted of murder and sentenced to life in prison. We are designing a six part documentary game series that explores various areas of the criminal justice system and prison industrial complex, ranging from 
how a defendant acquires a lawyer, to the process of negotiating a plea agreement. This clip that you're seeing is from the Life in Prison episode. We are now producing the episode about the underlying felony, which in this case is the theft of a van. Because this is based on real events and the experiences of real people, the idea is not to create an alternative reality, rather it is a hybrid experience that fuses documentaries and games and allows a video database to affect and drive the game forward. I made, I put them in a situation where they can get killed. I deserve that. I probably deserve what I'm doing. I probably do. I probably deserve to be here for the rest of my life. I can live with that. I don't want to, but I can, you know? here afterwards about um, how we uh, can do that afterwards. Uh, it's a, we find it a great challenge and we talk about Peter uh, often. It's, uh, I think it's something that can be very good for games. Uh, for game. uh, our next game, we just released a game for the UN. It's uh, part of their Say No to Violence Against Women campaign. It's just a quiz game, uh, highlighting some of their facts from many of their reports uh, that they produce and um, we for this game we were just trying to make it as emotionally uh, powerful as as we could and uh, making in, in giving the facts uh, I think give, giving, the so. giving the facts giving the facts away I think it'll come up in a second. And as you play this quiz, there's something called a global action counter that you add to with each correct question. And what the global action counter is, is something that the UN uses to leverage their member states into making uh, violence against women a, a priority in each of their countries. But, uh, I'll show you a piece of that. Oh, yeah. Do you want to ask a question? What's the big action that we're supposed to take at the end of the game? So 
Excuse me? So what specific actions are the players supposed to take at the end of the game? Oh, for this particular uh, quiz, you don't actually take the action. Each question that you answer correctly is counted as an action by the United Nations, and they use that as leverage with their member states to try to try to coordinate uh, policy changes. Yes. Um, are these games aimed towards like getting more young people to watch the documentary, or is it more for post after you watch the documentary, you can be more active in that actual like? In terms of the documentary game, yeah, uh, I, we we were designing it through standalone, uh, not so much that you would play the game and then watch the documentary, but you would play the game. And the way we were designing it is that it would be a, a sort of a cinematic database. So if it's a it's a database cinema experience where you're experiencing the documentary in a free form as you're playing. But cracking that nut is hard. Like that bridge is hard, right? Because documentaries do something, you know, does something really important. Games do something really like interesting and kind of different. In the middle are all the, like this rich territory of really there's a, there's been a, a lot of exploration already in like either database cinema, database aesthetics, computational documentary. A lot of that stuff is really interesting, but it doesn't quite get to the highly experiential, uh, uh, you know, the agency and the real sort of mm, truly more game-like experiences, right? So there's still like this gap that. Um, at least for us, hard to like really truly merge, you know? Do you have one last question for take action? Yeah. Yeah, what age range of games designed for? Which um which one? Yeah. This, this one. Yeah. This one is designed for uh, mostly adults. Uh, and um, it's designed not for gamers. They didn't want I mean they wanted to quiz, they they were very clear on that. They didn't want us to stray away from uh, the simple mechanic of answering questions. And it was made, made for adults. But the one, the one for bullying, or is that like middle school? You, yeah, so that group, that game actually has two subsets to the game. One if you are um, 8 to 10, and one if you're 11 to 14. So depending on what you select, you get different experiences. So it's from 8 to 14. That was that was the, the uh, target group. And the first dying was really very much specifically the audience was you're sort of American college student, actually. To, and, and the game, actually, uh, it does several things. It, um, um, at, at a certain point in the gameplay, should you want to continue playing, um, where you, if you were interested enough, you could partake in letter writing campaign, which affected your gameplay, and you can move forward. And this was actually, like, you know, in 2005, 2006, that was kind of relatively new. And you could bring in your social network with it without leaving the game environment, and this was before Facebook games, and that would propel you to move on in the game as well.